Hello and welcome to part four of our fire team chapter two. And previously we worked on our lobby screen, getting our player list appearing of all the players that have connected to our session. In this episode, we're gonna work on our mode selection tool, allowing us to switch between different game modes before joining a match. So let's get started. Okay, so next we're gonna go back to our lobby play screen. So what we're gonna to add to this one is on the left hand side, we're gonna have the mode selection, the map selection and the start game button here. So let's go ahead and create that side for us. So first thing we're gonna do is do the map and mode selections. So let's go ahead and create those as sub widgets. Then we go lobby and we do mode selection. And in here, it's going to be pretty simple. All it's going to do is going to be two buttons on top of a image. So I'm going to get rid of my cast panel here. And we're going to have a border. Uh, oops, sorry, I've got to wrap that with a vertical box first. Sorry, my bad. Vertical box. Okay, so this first border here will be pure black background. And then I have another border beneath that. And this one would be the semi C3 one that we've been using. And this bottom one here is going to be set to fill. So I fill up the whole visible space there. In the top border, we can put some text in here to tell the player what this thing actually is. So I'm going to go into my top border there, drag that in, and I'm going to change the text here to read uh, mode selection. Okay, next we're going to make the buttons. Now the buttons are going to be on the left and right hand side of this border here. Uh, but they're going to be overlapping on top of our image that we may have underneath it. So I'm going to, with this border, put in an overlay. And that overlay is going to contain our buttons. So button. There. Yeah. And I'm going to put this button also inside of a horizontal box. So right click, wrap with horizontal box. Okay, so this horizontal box you want it to fill the available space of the overlay. So hit on fill and fill. The button here is fire as it is. And we're going to put another button in there too. And in between these two buttons are going to be, it's going to be a spacer. The spacer will allow you to fill in the gap and push the other button to the other side. We go to spacer there and hit fill and it'll push the button to the other side of this window here now i've just got to change this, the width and design of my buttons so on my button here i'm just going to add some text and drag that in and this text is simply just going to be my less than sign looking like that i can see what it looks like by the way on custom on screen change the width and like this to say 600 by 300 okay so it looks something like this so yeah we're going to have the left hand button with this and on the right hand button we're going to have another one obviously with the greater than symbol nope yeah and i'm also going to change the background color on both of these to be see-through Okay, so now I've got two basically invisible buttons on the left hand side of this image entirely. And speaking of the image here, on this overlay we've got a horizontal box, we're also going to have an image underneath it. Image, drag that into the overlay, and there it is. And we can set that to be centered or filled across the whole space. And for now we're just going to make this thing not visible because we haven't got a picture yet. So we'll just make that uh, visibility hidden, okay, and hit compile. So there's our mode selection. Now we've got these two buttons here we need to set up, so let's go and name them. This first button here is the left hand one, so it's going to be previous mode button. And another one is going to be next mode button. <clears throat> okay, next we need to know information about the various modes our game has so let's create a data table that contains information so i'm going to go to my data folder and create a data struct i'm going to call it f 
game modes. Game modes. Uh, yeah, game modes. That'd be fun. I open this up, and in here we're gonna have uh, the name of the game mode set as a string. We're gonna have a description. So this will be something that we appear on the screen when you're in the game. Again, be string or text, whatever you want to do. Uh, in fact, let's do it text. Both of these actually. Um, then you may have an image that you want to use for your mode section. So image there, and that'd be a texture 2D. And that. And there's more you could probably do to it as well, like you can do uh, whether it's team based or whatever else. But we could add to this later on, it's not a big deal. We're going to save on that one, and we're going to go back to our data folder. And in here, we're going to create a data table. So we click on the data table and choose our F game mode. And it'll be DT underscore game modes. Open this up. And we can add our various game modes to this. So the first row is going to be here. And we call this one deathmatch. We'll put a little description in later. No problem. Another row. And this one will be team deathmatch. And we'll do one more. And this one will be king of the hill. Give these row names. So we're going to do dm tdm k o t h okay so whatever how you want to name them it's totally up to you save there and we're done there so i'm going to go back to my lobby mode selection and we're going to go to the graph in the construct event we want to get hold of that data table row uh, in fact all of the rows sorry get data table row names and we're going to plug that in there and we're going to search for our DT game modes. Look at all the row names that we have here. We're going to go and write that to a variable and this will be game mode names. Okay, next we're going to need to make it so that we can cycle through each one of these, but we have to keep track of which one we're currently looking at. So, what we need to do is have a valid index here for our game modes. Game mode, index. And that'd be an integer. Okay. Right, now for these buttons. So I'm going to go to next mode button and do on clicked. And when it is clicked, we're going to tell our game mode index here to increase by one. We're going to do plus one. And we're going to check that's a valid index. So you drag out your game mode names and you do valid you see is valid index you'll plug that into the, the plus one that we've made now if it's not valid that means we've reached the end and we need to cycle back to the beginning uh otherwise it'll just increase like normal so if it is valid index we can drag that out to select int and if it's true you'll pick a so if it is valid great we'll use the plus symbol there if it's false meaning that's no longer valid it'll loop back around to the zero so we'll leave b at zero and that will be our return value. So we're going to set that back to the game mode index. We we'll now need to tell it to update our settings on our screen here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make this text here that says mode selection, say which mode we've actually got uh, selected. I'm going to change that one to be variable and name it game mode name text. Go to graph here and when we've clicked on next mode button we want it to update our entire widget here i'm going to create another function or event rather called custom and we do update um i don't know update mode we'll call it and in update mode we're going to tell it to change the text here based upon what the index gets from the row names. So let's get row names, do get, copy, plug in the row name index, and we're gonna do get data table row. And you wanna search for DT game modes. We now can break open our result here and get the name, description, image that we need here. So at the moment we just need the name. So we're gonna take that out and do set 
text. Plug that into there and then hook out to in text there. Then we just call update mode over here at the end here. Okay. Now we're going to do the same for the previous uh, button. We have previous mode button I've clicked. And say print function is almost exactly the same. Um, my differences. I'm just going to copy most of this. And plug that in. So the game mode index now is going to be taking away one. So we're going to do minus one. Plug that into is valid again. So if it is valid, great. We're going to keep it like normal. So just plug that into A. If it's B, I want it to go to the last index in that array. So we're going to take this one and go last index and plug that into B instead. Let go through and update the mode. Okay. Um, right, so that's that one. Hit save and let's now go back to our lobby play screen and add this to our screen here. I'm going to do mode and do lobby mode selection. Drag that into my camera panel and choose where this is going to go. So I'm going to put it there. Okay, so now we've got that in there. We're going to hit save and we're going to go back to the game. Play. The host match and it's my mode selection. And as I click on here, we can go through each of the game modes we've got in our data table. And now you can also add images of your own to this as well. And I'll change it there too. Just need to hook that bit in. But that'd be your challenge. See if you can take that on and, and figure that one out. Um, I say it's just grabbing that information and assigning it correctly there. There we are. We've got a mode selection. And that brings us to the end of part four. In the next part, we'll do the same again that we've done here for the modes, but this time for the maps. So come along in the next part, we'll do the map selection tool and then allow us to go into the game with a chosen, chosen game mode and a chosen map. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can catch all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thank you for watching and make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop this time like the last time.